Good day, and welcome to the sixth of a series of presentations on difficult-to-diagnose cases. Today, we will be reviewing the case of a 70-year-old patient who underwent MCG testing and the effects that accurate and early detection had upon his life after two months of testing and monitoring with our technology. This 70-year-old male patient has a history of sleep apnea, generally stressful life conditions, and a heavy predilection towards caffeine, and developed deep vein thrombosis and bilateral pulmonary embolism. We will be referring to him as Mr. D.B. Mr. D.B. is a busy business executive with a large family business who also works as a motivational speaker. To emphasize his habits, he was known to consume energy drinks of a rate of one or more every hour daily between 8 a.m. to noon. We'll be brushing over some of the details of the mathematical functions used by the diagnosis engine in our breakdown of this case, but more information can be found in our primer and the recently published chapter in the textbook, Personalized Precision Cardiovascular Medicine, an Integrative, Metabolic, and Functional Cardiovascular Medicine Approach, which should be reviewed first before watching our video. His initial MCG session scores on a severity score range that goes from 0 to 22 were recorded as 2.0, 2.0, 3.0, and a 2.0, placing him in category B, with indications of exclusively local focal ischemia favoring a more functional, low-level myocardial ischemia. The secondary markers were positive for occasional cardiomyopathy, wall motion dysfunction, uh, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, and incipient ventricular and atrial ventricular arrhythmia. The mixed expressions of pulmonary heart, congenital, or rheumatic heart structural anomalies showed an apparent possibility of pulmonary heart disease. The reproducible myocardial inflammation slash myocarditis, in addition to increased myocardial compliance, also indicated the occurrence of acute changes in his cardiovascular system. Along with this, the acute power failure and the global asynchrony, V5 less than 2, throughout all of the test sessions indicated other pathological changes. The noteworthy details from his MCG session reports are as follows. 1. The shifting from exclusively local ischemia in his initial test session to exclusively global ischemia one month in a follow-up test session before any of the onsets of his symptoms. Then, as flu-like symptoms began to kick in with complaints of irregular heartbeats following a week after his second session, his third MCG session showed dramatically elevated MCG scores of 7.0, 6.0, and 5.0, placing him in category F, with alternating global and local ischemia patterns that did not exist in his previous sessions. This alarming and acute shift pointed us in the correct direction to watch for the following possible causes. The overuse and reliance on caffeine leads to diuresis and dehydration in conjunction to his high-frequency travel. This, along with pain in his left leg, gives cause for suspecting the onset of deep vein thrombosis, leading to a potentially deadly pulmonary embolism. These predictions would later prove accurate. His flu-like symptoms also point to a viral infection affecting the rest of his body. This may have also contributed to the sudden acute elevation of his MCG severity scores. And three, after quitting caffeine drinks cold turkey and committing to forcing himself to get better sleep, he may have in fact been able to save his own life, as his follow-up MCG test sessions discovered the signs of recovery due to improvement from the acute signs of cardiac distress. Coincidentally, by this time, due to the persistent pain in his left leg, he finally decided to visit an emergency room and was indeed diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis and a bilateral pulmonary embolism, at which point he was hospitalized for anticoagulation treatment and further testing. A summary of the analysis of the MCG reports will be presented at the end of this video. These are graphical representations of the autopower spectra measurements of this patient's test sessions. We want to use this to demonstrate how the MCG analysis program analyzes the unique expressions of the cardiovascular system by breaking down electrical signals of the heart into frequency bands that can be measured by the MCG analysis engine as such. From here, the engine measures the peaks, troughs, interpeak intervals, and the overall power output represented by the area under the curve from all expressible and readable peaks within the frequency spectra. The increasing redistribution of power peaks towards higher frequencies indicate a more even distribution of power output by the system. This expression is usually a good sign for long-term well-being and survival. This function, impulse response, is useful for looking at the response of the system to an internal or external stimulus. It can be used to measure the myocardial compliance. When it's increased, this may mean that there is acute myocardial damage or myocarditis to ischemia. When it's reported as decreased, it may indicate myocardial hypertrophy or decreased stiffness of the myocardium due to inflammatory changes, just as a few examples. 
Here, MCG detects a persistent increased myocardial compliance, indicating decreased stiffness of the heart throughout his sessions leading to various expressions of arrhythmia. Moving along to his phase angle shift visualization, the expressions shown are both quite abnormal, showing significant shifts below the neutral line, indicating shifting towards the right side of the system functionally, probably due to his pulmonary embolism, his deep vein thrombosis, and or his flu-like symptoms. For the most part, mainly functional ischemia remained with some minor and subtle changes in the lower two frequency bands. We believe that atrial fibrillation and other cardiac arrhythmias can more often be caused by functional ischemia, acute hypoxia or hypoxemia, or chronic myocarditis, all of which can be expressed mathematically via this function. Cross-correlation, meanwhile, provides many other useful measurements, focusing visually on the results generated and shown in the graph, where the most dire session showed a veritable wall of peaks compared to a more normal pattern that's easier to discern. This allows us to measure the sheer deviation from the norm, so to say. The initial supply and demand imbalance patterns were probably the cause of the acute pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis, even without anatomic coronary artery obstruction. The transfer function can serve as the bridge to move from one functional environment to another. The differences between the pre- and post-treatment measurements are, again, shown with very visible differences which the system uses for differential diagnosis and evidence-based prognostication. These colored heat maps of the multiple functions in action are very useful not only for visualization of the mathematical output, but also serving as gateways for the machine learning algorithms to better understand the pattern recognition and the disease severity calculations for early warning of sudden cardiac death. And finally, these mathematical structural elements matrices collect the results of these functions described previously to create these patterns in a transparent and reproducible manner. The takeaway points from this presentation are 1. Early diagnosis of low-level ischemia is extremely difficult to utterly impossible using conventional imaging tests. In this case, MCG detected subtle but reproducible changes from local to global ischemia merely one month apart before the onset of flu-like symptoms and upon the onset of symptoms caused by bilateral pulmonary embolism, more than likely caused by severe dehydration and high-frequency caffeine diuresis. When his MCG severity score surged in one session, it was enough of a wake-up call for him to get a weekend of restful, regular sleep and remove his caffeine intake entirely, likely leading to him being better hydrated, which is why his follow-up session predicted a better prognosis than previously. Two, the lifestyle changes he made after his worryingly high MCG session scores were likely the reason why his third session showed improvement. The important note is that the MCG system was capable of detecting the gradual changes, for better or for worse, of Mr. DB's cardiovascular system, providing a much better earlier warning and in-the-moment detection of the effects of his deep vein thrombosis and bilateral pulmonary embolism for careful monitoring. This compared to the difficulty of accessing specialist physicians and diagnostic tools that would normally be required to detect these issues outside of an emergency room, when it likely would have been too little or too late to help him. It's quite fortunate that the accessibility of MCG as a monitoring tool was able to give both him and his physician the information necessary to make the call for him to visit the emergency room for anticoagulation treatment, just to be completely sure he would be alright on top of his lifestyle changes. More importantly, however, third, we luckily had a baseline MCG test session shortly before this acute episode, which allowed us to make a timely assessment and differential diagnosis much more accurately. Therefore, it's essential that a set of baseline MCG tests be available in a time of crisis, which means preventative, regular testing is vital towards building a better picture of a patient's health. 4. MCG can be a very effective diagnostic and monitoring tool for accurate detection and monitoring of the effects of flu-like symptoms, deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolisms, and more safely at bedside, even at much lower levels of early-stage ischemic heart diseases in ways that other tests simply are not capable of. I hope this presentation has proved useful in better understanding some of how our system performs its diagnosis to save lives and cut costs for patients and doctors alike. If you have any questions, feel free to visit our website or send an email to info at premierheart.com and have a wonderful day. Thank you for your time.